Hey guys, Paul Lewis with FHF Gear. Here today to go over a lot of the common customer questions and concerns we get about the harness. So I'm gonna real quickly kind of go over the, the frequent issues we see. This harness is basically set up with everything wrong that could be wrong. Uh, if your harness looks like this with loose flaps and webbing and tiny uh, loops, then you're not gonna be as happy with the harness as you should be and you're not using it to its uh, full potential or the, the design, uh, you're not using it as it was designed. So the first thing we get commonly is that people lose their uh, bungee and that is due to, when these come from the factory, we purposely leave them loose. So you can adjust this tension, you can set your loop length and to your liking and your binoculars. Every binocular height is different so you need to set that to yours. Every harness comes from us with an instruction tag on how to properly tie that knot, tuck the knot in, and then tuck your tag ins under the label. If done correctly and that knot is tied correctly, you should never have to worry about it again once the tension is set. So after that, we see issues that are all related to sizing. Uh, one of them and one of the most common one is exactly this. The loop is too small it overlaps the hook or they can't get it attached to the hook. If you have that issue, you have too small of binoculars in the pouch. The sizing of these harnesses is designed uh, around the size of the binoculars, not the size of the person. You could be a 300 pound guy, if you have smaller binoculars, you still need a small, not the large. The height and width of the pouch is what determines the size, not the harness itself. These are the same in every, every harness we sell. So. They're designed so that that binocular will sit up in here uh, if you have a correctly sized binocular and you'll get a tight seal over the lens. The lid will come down, uh, overlap the box a certain amount, and then you can adjust the loop to the length you need it. Uh, if it's too small, it's just not going to work out. Um, secondly, with sizing um, is that the binos sit too deep. Uh, they're hard to get out. Like I said, you can prop those up or you just need a smaller size binocular. Um, the other one related to that is that the lid won't stay closed. It's sort of related in that you either have too small a binocular and there's no tension against that bungee or you just haven't tightened that knot. These come from the factory, as I said, uh, at a certain length um, and it's probably not going to match your binoculars. So tighten that up, get the tension correct, and that should help, help this lock into that hook correctly and you won't have that issue. The next three I want to cover are related to the webbing management and use of the hardware. Um, the first one we see is that people have lost their bino hanger. If you don't have this locked over through that tri-glide, this can just slide right out. Um, that's to adjust the length of that. You really need to lock that in. So once that's installed, you just flip that over and put it through the tri-glide like so, and then it's locked in and won't come out. The triglide also functions as the height adjustment uh, lock, I guess. So the, the harness itself, you can adjust the height up or down uh, with this, this uh, buckle on the top and then lock that into place with this triglide. Once that's installed, or I'm sorry, once the height is set where you want it, make sure you lock the height in with that triglide. So once in there, that's not going to come loose or move. That's there. And then that bino hanger, as I said before, is installed over the top of that. This can slide anywhere on there and just make sure that's out in front of your backpack strap so you don't end up with a hot spot. But that becomes a pivot point for the hanger. So secondly, uh, related to the buckle management would be people losing the, the attachment point to their binocular. If this is attached once go through your binoculars, it, it has to go back up through both sets of teeth, not just through one, because then it's going to slide out easily. So make sure that goes through your binoculars and then back, back up through the buckle, engages those teeth on both sides. Um, and we'll, we can uh, attach some other videos and uh, photos of, of how that should be attached. And I think those are all on the website. Um, if your harness itself won't stay tight, it's moving up and down or it's, these buckles won't stay tight, it's likely due to one, these, this not being locked in and that allowing the height to, to move on you throughout the day as you move, or the harness itself was designed to ride high and tight on the chest and not move. If 
if you're running around during the day with with it floppy and loose, then um, likely that buckle is going to slowly uh, move and, and loosen up on you. It's designed to ride high and tight and lock itself in. If those if the webbing is tight, it's going to engage the teeth on all the buckles and it's not going to move. It, it stays put uh, and and is as it was designed, so it's not going to move on you and bounce around and hit you in the chest. Uh, the last two I want to cover are related to the flap. Some of it's due to the sizing. Uh, if you, the sizing was designed so that that, you shouldn't have a significant amount of extra lid that comes all the way down to the hook. You know, it, from even a quarter inch overlap all the way down to about halfway is, is how it's, how we like to see it. Um, obviously there's room for movement up and down based on the set of your binos or the size of your binos, but if done correctly, this lid is going to sit uh, about like so, and you can get in and out of it one handed. There's no reason to feel like you have to tuck the lid up under your chin to try and get get in and out of the, the harness or get your binos in and out of the harness. They're, they're designed to be able to put away and take out one handed. And if you set your binos in there, you still have a cover. So if it's uh, light rain, you're still going to keep your lenses clean. And then with a very short amount of use, you, this just becomes second nature to get in and out of it one-handed. So one of the misconceptions we see is that it's two-handed use only or that that flap is going to hit you in the face all the time. And it's just not something we see in real life use. So these are the common things we see all the time. Uh, if you have any other questions we didn't cover here, let us know. But uh, if you've made it to this video, click on our YouTube channel. We have a lot of gear hack videos and how-to videos on all of this stuff in depth. Uh, if there's something here that we don't cover on the other channel, we're adding um, videos all the time. So let us know and we'll try and uh, create something for you. Uh, but hopefully this answers your questions and, and makes you a little bit happier with the harness you've got. Thanks and have a good day.